What a letdown. Just kidding. That was amazing. The finale of Obi-Wan Kenobi delivers in spades. But from here on out, there will be massive spoilers. So go ahead and check out now if you haven't seen it yet. I appreciate that this episode doesn't waste any time getting things started. We've been waiting five full episodes for this. Let's get to the showdown. And boy, did that showdown deliver between Kenobi and Vader. While I'm still not a fan of the shaky cam cinematography in the fight scenes, it's okay. Um, I don't love it. I don't hate it. It's just very different from what we're used to seeing in lightsaber battles in Star Wars. That's the only thing that takes away from it because it's harder to follow the action. That being said, this was the best example of it within the show and the fight was great. The choreography was pitch perfect. The force powers on display were powerful. Like we get to see two of the top Jedi ever full force and seeing Kenobi at full strength and Vader being kind of taken by surprise was was really a treat. This was an important part of Obi-Wan's arc and as he defeats Vader and he slices open the mask, that whole exchange between them was powerful, man. I I loved it. I will say, I was hoping for a little bit more pleading from Obi-Wan to Vader because in Return of the Jedi, Darth Vader says, Obi-Wan wants a lot as you do to Luke in terms of there's still being good in him. But in a way, you can argue that that's what was happening. He was apologizing to Anakin. He was reaching out for what happened. And Vader's response floored me. Knowing that Anakin obviously still hates Obi-Wan for everything that happened for what he did to him, he doesn't blame Obi-Wan for the failure. He blames himself. And that is one of the most in-character, perfect moments for Vader I've ever seen on screen. The comics and stuff do a lot of this, but actually see that in a show, to see that self-loathing really full on display was incredible. And how Obi-Wan says, my friend truly is dead goodbye Darth and the original Alec Guinness calls Darth Vader Darth I just I love that little touch I, I love it I do also wish that when they kind of start fighting the second time after Kenobi lifts up all the rocks and gets out that they'd use a remix of Duel of the Fates or Battle of Heroes for the music just hearing that would have elevated it even further and while I'm glad the show has its own music identity and it doesn't rely on the John Williams classic themes too much they still use them at the end of the episode so that would have been a perfect time for it I love how encouraging Obi-Wan is in this episode with Leia, with Roken, with pretty much everyone and even to himself. Hey, yo, we got to see Darth Sidious, Emperor Palpatine back. That was a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. And hearing that that is why Vader stops hunting for Kenobi because Palpatine basically says that his feelings for Kenobi, his attachment, ironically, is getting in the way of him being the true Sith Lord he needs to be in Palpatine's eyes and him letting it go for Palpatine is perfect and makes complete sense within canon. But also, Obi-Wan saying that they need to keep their relationship, their adventure, their meeting a secret so no one can know that they know each other in the way that they do, makes it fit perfectly with how A New Hope plays out and her being a little bit more mysterious in what she says. She still says Obi-Wan Kenobi, so I could see some complaining about that. But that works for me, that cleans it up for me. I hope it does for others, I hope it does for you. All in all, those little details really helped us fit nicely with A New Hope. Man, the relationship between Kenobi and Leia is just so sweet. I am so glad that they did that in this series because we never really got to see their relationship in anything else. And that's not something I knew I wanted and now I have it and I'm really glad we do. And here's something I simultaneously both love and think is just a slight missed opportunity. And that is the big cameo from Liam Neeson as Qui-Gon Jinn. It's the first time we've seen him since The Phantom Menace, other than hearing his voice in The Clone Wars and seeing his character on screen, and Liam Neeson did do that. As great as it was to see him back, he looked great, sounded great, the moment was perfect with the dialogue, brought a huge smile to my face. I'm so glad they chose to end it that way. I do think there was a missed opportunity for Liam Neeson to appear before Kenobi fought Vader, or maybe before their second fight on the planet, as the emotional catalyst he needed to truly find himself and become one with the Force again. I appreciate that he found it on his own and we find out that Qui-Gon was there all along, encouraging him every step of the way and Obi-Wan just couldn't see it. But it would have been nice if we could have seen him during the Vader fight and what if Vader had seen him? What would have been Qui-Gon's reaction to seeing Anakin as Vader on screen? I get that that leans into fan service territory a little bit, but there was more of an opportunity here and they chose restraint, which I appreciate. But at the same time, it's just a little frustrating. That being said, at least we got it and what we got was good. Another thing I unexpectedly enjoyed was seeing young Luke, Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru. Their fierce protection over Luke 
just made me smile as as a dad myself i just really appreciated those character moments and how much they would defend him and you see how much they love him and it adds to the tragedy of their demise in a new hope when we didn't really get to spend a lot of time with them that being said i really want to like reva i really want to like her place within the show i really want to like where her story is going and how it played out here but man i just i struggle with some of the execution the performance is a bit all over the place at times. She takes a lot of screen time within the show. The idea of it is great, but it almost feels like, like at times that it could have been a separate show about her like undercover and the Inquisitors trying to take out Vader. That would have been really interesting. And I'm glad that Kenobi is able to encourage her and that she comes back to the light, but they don't really explain why she went after Luke or how she knew that it was Vader's son did she know it was Vader's son? Did she get all that from the little communication device in the last episode? How did she get to Tatooine? How was she still alive after that lightsaber stab? Well, I guess the Grand Inquisitor was, and there's no explanation of that either. Those kinds of details and those kinds of things that are missing, just, it, it, it makes, it takes me out of it because it makes me question things in my mind about the show that the, I shouldn't have to question that the show should have answered quite easily with either dialogue or actually showing it. And where we end up leaving her, it opens the door for something else when really I feel like her story should have ended with her dying. Her choosing to be better, her choosing to redeem herself and make the choice to not be like Vader before she passes away. Now I have a million questions as to where, where is she during the events of the original trilogy? Is she going to show up in some other project? Will she be in Andor? Will she be in the next Fallen Order sequel that's called Survivor? And if she knows that Vader has kids, that's really dangerous information for someone else to know out in the galaxy, especially the fact that she tried to kill him. So that creates some issues for me. They're obviously going to do something more with her later. But I don't know, man. I almost wonder if it would have been better if like fifth brother, even though he dies in Rebels, so it wouldn't have worked, or the other the other sister that was with him, I'm not sure which one she was. If she had found the communication device and when Reva died in the last episode, and she's the one who goes to the planet, trying to prove herself to Vader, trying to prove herself to fifth brother, and Obi-Wan is forced to fight her. I'm not sure. That's all what if scenario. I appreciate what they were trying to do here. Just by and large, Reva's storyline was the weakest part of the show. It's not bad. There's a lot of good ideas that are just lacking in execution. There's even a lot of fan service moments in here. I love how Obi-Wan says again, I will do what I must. That one was like, okay, it's a little on the nose, but I, I appreciate it. I, as someone who's a huge Revenge of the Sith fan, it didn't bother me. And the hello there is saved perfectly at the end as he says it to Luke when he meets him for the first time. That's just, it made me smile. Both of them did, really. But man, this series as a whole has just been a joy ride from start to finish. Not every episode is created equal. There are moments of execution issues. There are moments where there's some missed opportunities, which is by and large consistent with Star Wars as a whole. Each trilogy, with the exception of the original, really has some of these issues in some place, in some way, shape, or form. But the broad strokes of the show, Kenobi's PTSD, his relationship with Leia, and his showdown with Darth Vader are all landed so well for me, I can forgive a lot of the other minor things because I choose to focus on what I liked and what I enjoyed, and it way overshadowed anything I didn't that I had nitpicks about. I give Obi-Wan Kenobi the series 4.5 out of 5 stars. I've heard a ton of rumors about a season 2. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not sure it should happen. But given how this ended. And only seeing Qui-Gon in one scene. And knowing we could have a Tatooine focused adventure. With Obi-Wan and Luke. And all of them. I wouldn't be mad if we got more. I'd watch it. Ewan and Hayden have both said they want more. So I'll be curious to see if they green light a season two or maybe if we'll get a Darth Vader series. You never know. I'm excited for any options and I'm just so happy that Star Wars has so much to watch right now. So now that Kenobi is over, what did you think about it? Did you enjoy the show? Did you dislike the show? I know there's kind of been a lot of varying opinions in between. Remember, always look for the good and may the force be with you.